Hi guys, I wanted to share with you one positional masterpiece that was played by Alpha Zero in uh, his, hers, its match against Stockfish. Uh, well, there's no point in uh, checking it with the engine because, uh, well, Stockfish was playing on a supercomputer. So I would like to take a look with a human eye on how Alpha Zero played a fantastic positional chess and well ended up with with a kingside attack. So I really love this game and I hope you will enjoy it together with me. Uh, I noticed that in most of the games Alpha Zero was fianchettoing its bishop. So heads up if you don't know what to do, you play Catalan or fianchetto the bishop. Alpha Zero came up to it on its own. It's playing Berlin with black and uh, this one with white. So uh, this is a theoretical position, knight to e4, and alpha zero chooses bishop d2. By the way, if you didn't know what to do in this line, seriously consider bishop d2. Um, the most powerful chess player ever chooses this one. All right, so Stockfish, um, it was Stockfish 8 on a really powerful computer playing, decided to go d5. There are alternatives, there are moves like f5, bishop f6, knight d2, and maybe some more. But Stockfish chooses d5, and Alpha Zero immediately simplifies the center. And I noticed it in many games that they play each other. White now has a good bishop on g2, and black has a bad bishop on b7, period. That's it. That bishop on b7 is forever a bad piece, well, unless something uh, extraordinary happens here. And now Alpha Zero starts to slowly improve its position. Every single move is improving its position or dealing with a threat that came. So queen goes to b3, knight to a6, and rook goes to d1. This looks like a subtle move with the rook. The d-file is not about to open. Um, not entirely sure what was the idea. Maybe it was preparing knight takes e4 and then rook on d-file would be, would be doing well. So Alpha, uh, Stockfish played c5, fighting for the center. Alpha 0 slightly improves the position. Well, not even slightly, significantly. Now the rook is ready to go, the bishop is active. So that's why Stockfish decides to close the center with c4. And now take a look, look in the eyes of this bishop. It's very sad now. Another pawn appeared on white square. He's, uh, he's not very happy about it. But on the other hand, black got some space. But Alpha Zero is fantastic play makes. Actually, they had this position twice in this match. Uh, in this game, Alpha Zero, sorry, Stockfish choose f6. In another one, it was Queen d7 played. Uh, you can find it um, in the. You can Google it actually, or you can find it in the description, the link to to the games, to most of the games. All right, so f6 was played. And now alpha 0, since the position is relatively closed, it means that white has enough time to maneuver some of his pieces. So now alpha 0 starts improving his pieces a little bit. Knight d2, undermining this knight on e4. And what, what, what should happen now? It's either the knight would leave and then this bishop would become active, or, like it happened in the game, f5. But Hopefully you can see the difference. What did Alpha Zero get from it? Well, there's a forever a weak square on e5 and this bishop on b7 saying, oh my god, another pawn on white square. I'm screwed here. So uh, I would think that Alpha Zero would move the knight back to e5, which would make sense, but Alpha Zero find a new, a even better setup. It attacks this weakness on d5, so it's improving the knight, knight to f1, rook to c8, knight goes to e3. Slow improvement, every single move I can understand, unlike most of the computer matches that I, that I checked. Every single move in this particular game, played by Alpha Zero, makes perfect human sense to me, and it gives me like a, probably a false uh, uh, feeling that I can play as well, uh, such strong chess. But uh, this kind of chess inspires me, it means that there's nothing extraordinary about chess you need to know or be able to calculate to play this kind of chess. I understand every single move and hopefully you'll understand all of them as well with my help too. Queen d7, now white improves another piece a little bit, bishop goes to e5. Bishop is well placed there in the middle of the board. Knight comes back to e6 and now alpha 0 undermines this knight from e4. It has to go now, it either has to go to f6 which is then the pawn on d5 would be very loose. Bishop takes f6 uh, and f4 could follow and the pawn on d5 will probably collapse. I'm not using engine now, but this looks 
looks right to me, something like this. The pawn is hanging, and if knight c7, um, well, no, knight c4 is not working, maybe undermining b3, or maybe postponing this capture and improving slightly before capturing. So uh, Stockfish decided to take on c3, and alpha 0 takes with the pawn. By the way, well, usually you're supposed to move the pawns closer to the center, and this is what alpha 0 is doing, supporting the center even more. So Stockfish plays knight c7. Again, take a look at this bishop. It has no future whatsoever. I cannot, I cannot see a scenario where that bishop becomes active unless white pushes like e4 or something. After next move, that bishop understood, that's it. The game is over for me. But you can say, but white's bishop is also has uh, all these pawns on dark squares. The huge difference between them is bishop on e5 is enormously active. If black could move the bishop to e4, I know that back in the day and when the chess started, I think it was allowed that the bishop could jump over its own pawns. Well, it's not relevant at this moment, but still, if the bishop could jump to e4, I would probably prefer black even, because black has potential on the queen side here. But that's not according to modern chess rules, so that bishop on b7 is now forever bad, and this bishop on g2 is forever good. And every single of white's minor pieces are active. And every single of black's minor pieces are passive, and that's a huge difference. Well, the rooks are still doing nothing because there's no open files available. So now black tries to improve his knight, knight e8, white gains some space with a4, and well, maybe a5 would happen, maybe I stop b5, it's usually a useful move a4. Knight f6, and now white comes up with a brilliant idea to improve its position. Where can white play? Why on the queen side white is not significantly better if in fact black has pawn majority on the queen side. So what should white do? White should focus its attention on the king side. Specifically, this is the breakthrough white should pursue. How do you do that? Well, slowly. Black has no counterplay, so white can take its time. Rook to f1. White is slowly moving the pieces towards the king side. Rook f7. Bishop f3. White is preparing g4. Rook and black is also preparing itself for a breakthrough. h3, white takes it slow, every single move is following the plan. Knight to e4, and now alpha 0 makes a brilliant uh, positional decision. Bishop takes e4, and pawn takes e4. Giving up a good bishop for a, actually a good knight. But the, the difference is now huge, because now white has pawn majority on the king side. And frankly speaking, I think this position is already strategically lost for black. Take a look at white's minor pieces. Amazing. This knight on e3 is putting pressure on a weak pawn and supporting f5. This bishop on e5 is actually worse the whole rook, I would say. This is so powerful. That bishop on b7 is hopeless, and white just needs to move all the pieces to the king side and push some pawns, and that's exactly what alpha 0 does. g4, bishop c6, black's trying to activate the bishop. In fact, I don't think there was need to do that, uh, as alpha 0 did, for example, like queen d1 or queen c2 were perfectly playable moves, but alpha 0 calculated first it says I don't need that pawn on a4. Improving the queen a little bit, bishop takes a4, improving the queen, just a positional sacrifice. Actually black doesn't have anything here, this rook is controlling everything, putting pressure on this bishop and that pawn, and white's plan is frankly so simple and primitive that it's just pushing the pawns on the king side, and there's nothing black can do about it because it's heavily supported by these pieces, and the rook from a1 can join any moment now. Every single white's piece is active, and every single black's piece, well, is not active to put, to put it mildly. a5, h4, b5, f5. There's nothing happening on the queen side for black, for, at least in the Black would have to spend like five moves to do something there, but white's attack is already coming. h6, rook f2, white is preparing to double the rooks or move the rook to g2. Small improvement, queen d8, and now it's time for a combination. G Even though there are plenty of other winning moves, but I love the fact that alpha 0 doesn't care about pawns, it cares about initiative and opening up files and squares for its pieces. h takes g and fantastic move queen g4. Queen g4, and the idea is that if pawn takes h4, it's rook g2, and then queen goes to h5, and then rook goes to g6. White is actually three pawns down here. Oh, sorry, it's, yeah, rook g2, 
bishop f6 and I think it's uh, I forgot what was the move here maybe queen g6 maybe queen g6 what I love about this position is that uh, uh, ah it's bishop takes sorry it's bishop takes queen takes and queen h5 and then rook g6 and then white is apparently checkmating so stockfish uh, check this one on a high depths you can this weak engine doesn't understand this but a good engine understand that black is hopeless here so actually uh, stockfish was so desperate that played b4 sacrificed the bishop and now white is even piece up and this is well does not require any more comments that's it. So too bad that Stockfish gave gave it gave up uh, this pawn. It probably it postpones the mate for a few moves or something, uh, according to uh, to its calculation. But uh, too bad the game didn't end in a natural way like G takes H4. So, but all of White's moves were understandable. It was clear why this particular move was made. With every single move, White was improving its pieces, improving the rook, improving the bishop. Moving the queen from attack, moving the queen from attack, improving the knight, improving the knight, improving the knight, improving the bishop, kicking the knight, improving the pawn structure, improving the bishop. The bishop was for a second a passive piece, 98, getting some space, improving the rook, improving the bishop, improving, uh, going with the plan, takes, takes, in getting some space, improving the queen, improving the queen getting some space, pushing some pawns, executing the plan, and now a combination. There were other ways. Uh, it's not, not a very human way to, to go here. G takes h4, uh, rook g2, bishop f6. According to, to good engine, uh, it was winning. Well, uh, I don't think that humans would, uh, human being would, would do this, um, just sacrificing uh, unless, unless uh, you're sure about the win. But alpha zero, I'm sure, calculated everything. And white is just white is just dominating here. So I really feel inspired by those games because uh, simple chess is a good chess. You just improve with every single move that should be your priority. Unless, of course, a combination happens. Every single move should be like, how can I improve one of my pieces? How can I improve my position? Etc. I hope you liked this game because I enjoyed it a lot. There's frankly a lot of games to uh, to learn from by Alpha Zero Stockfish Mats. It's just not not so many of those are such straightforward and without a single move uh, being used for nothing. Uh, there were games where Alpha Zero at some point like goes back and forth and then goes somewhere else. There was nothing here. It was all smooth and accurate, and and crushing. And that actually that bishop from from A4 never really entered the game. Even from here, it has no perspective. Like, where would you go with that bishop? Nowhere. So basically, white was piece up from positional point of view uh, from like move 10 or something. All right. I hope you enjoyed it. Take care. Subscribe to my channel. S feel free to spread the word. Bye.